Good morning. It's three minutes after ten and you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where I thought we would begin. You can tell I don't have my ducks in a row, can't you, before the light comes on, because I'm going to change course slightly to reflect upon the last few words of Simon's news bulletin a moment ago, uh, specifically the pound to dollar exchange rate, back to a dollar thirteen now for a pound. The, the sort of very angry people who don't understand anything but think that they've somehow been winning for the last six years without ever being able to tell you what the prize is would, and I've seen quite a lot of this on social media, would, would argue this morning that no one's mentioning the exchange rate because it goes against the narrative, the idea that because the pound has recovered against the dollar. Um, Everybody who pointed out the idiocy of Kwasi Kwarteng's mini-budget and Liz Truss's complicity in it uh, are are deliberately ignoring these statistics. And uh, although I personally probably waste too much time trying to help angry people who don't understand anything but think that they've somehow been winning for the last six years, it's in the actual news bulletin. And the reason why the pound is recovering in this way is, is essentially twofold. Firstly, the Bank of England's intervention has helped. They've spent a a relatively small amount of the 60-odd billion that was set aside to sort of steady the ship. But that ends at half past four today, and nobody's entirely sure about what is going to happen at that point. And the second element of, of rehabilitation of the pound, if you like, is, of course the belief now in the markets that a U-turn is on the way. So there are two reasons why the pound is doing better. One is that the Bank of England intervened deliberately and specifically to alleviate the impact of the government's policy, economic and and, and, and fiscal, almost like antlers with locked stags. And the second is that the market are presuming that there has to be a U-turn because they find it almost impossible to contemplate the possibility that Kwarteng and Trust will stay the course, will press on, despite the fact that they continue to insist that they will. But of course, not that long ago, they continued to insist that they would definitely not contemplate a U-turn on the question of tax cuts for the highest earners in society. The most obvious U-turn, if, if it is to be partial, would be in the area of corporation tax, the, the, the 25% rate that had originally been planned by Rishi Sunak. But I, I just thought I'd mention that because you know, I, I don't receive a lot of love in return, I won't lie to you, but I think the, the very, very angry people who don't understand anything but think they've somehow been winning for the last six years do at least deserve to be acknowledged every once in a while. So um, so that's them acknowledged then. Let's look at the three ways out of this, or at least let's, let's consider just how unprecedented it is. I, I've used that word a lot. I've used it so much. I've got a regular joke about the use of the word unprecedented now reaching unprecedented levels. But I tell you what is particularly unprecedented about where we are at the moment. It's actually the consensus. It is almost impossible, even in the comment pages of the Daily Telegraph. I'll say that again because I I still can't quite believe the words that are coming out of my mouth. Even in the comment pages of the Daily Telegraph, it is almost impossible to find anybody who is supportive of a conservative prime minister. The Daily Mail has gone in the space of a month from saying, at last, a true conservative budget to saying she has 17 days to save her job. I don't know (laughs) quite how anybody rationalises, processes or justify that ridiculous... um, Uh, editorial U-turn, but it's every bit as screeching and violent as the U-turns already undertaken by the Prime Minister. The question this morning, and you can buzz in early on this one if you want to uh, uh, get your answer in, Uh, the the question this morning is is what U-turn happens next. There are three ways forward, and I'm going to underpin everything I say to you today and quite possibly for the next couple of weeks with a little reminder that we are now outside the realms of party politics. The lens of footballification, which I invented to explain how people are incapable of criticising their own side, that the scarves tied so tightly round the necks of the supporters that the flow of blood to the brain has been cut off. That is almost in abeyance now, apart from the extremely angry people who don't understand anything but somehow think they've been winning for the last six years. Everybody else has loosened their scarf. Conservative commentators, front pages of the Daily Mail, people who brought you Brexit, brought you Boris Johnson, brought you Trossonomics, brought you the steel of the new Iron Lady, people who who um, watched those hustings during that interminable leadership contest without um, realising or pointing out that what Rishi Sunak was saying was pretty close to evidential and demonstrable, whereas what his trust was saying was pretty close to an unevidenced fairy tale. Nobody's scarf is currently knotted 
so tightly around their neck that they are offering up full-throated and unqualified support for the Prime Minister. Even the ministers touring the studios, and this morning it was the turn of Greg Hands, even the ministers touring the studios um, don't seem persuasive or persuaded. Hands this morning was channelling uh, Tom Jones, I think, when claiming completely erroneously that it's not unusual for a Chancellor to fly back early from a, a financial summit in order to hold emergency talks with... A Prime Minister, of course, the obvious question to have asked a minister claiming that it's not unusual for a Chancellor to fly back uh, for emergency talks with the Prime Minister would be when? How often does it happen then? If it's if it's not if it's not uh, if it's not unusual, can you talk me through the last five times that it's happened? Perhaps. Um, no, of course you can't, because it is unusual, profoundly unusual, and evidence of the scale of the emergency that the country is currently facing. Um, and so what happens next? There are two ways to answer the questions I'm about to ask you, or rather there are two questions that I'm about to ask you, both of which you're welcome to answer. There's the question of what will happen next, and there's a question of what do you think should happen next. And one thing I'd say about Liz Truss's premiership so far is what will happen and what should happen have rarely been further apart. Usually you expect the weight of evidence or expertise to have at least some bearing upon the course that a politician would plot. But from the minute this ludicrous mini-budget was announced, and from the moment that the justification for, or the answer to the question of how on earth are you going to pay for this, became, well, don't ask me how I'm going to pay for this. Remember that I've also bought that. So the analogy that Theo and Usherwood and I worked up the other day when we were watching, or I was watching PMQs with a sense of, utter befuddlement. Everybody kept asking the, the, the Prime Minister, how are you going to pay for this? The markets are saying, how are you going to pay for these 65 or £63 billion pounds worth of tax cuts? How are you going to pay for it? And her response was, we've also spent a tonne of money on helping people with their energy bills. As I, as I pointed out, it would be a bit like coming home to your wife or your husband having bought a Lamborghini. And when they ask you, how on earth are we going to pay for this? You say, don't worry, I've also bought a Porsche. I think I might allow myself a moment to suggest that's that's one of the best um, analogies we've ever come up with on the programme. How are we going to pay for this Lamborghini, darling? What have you done? How are we going to pay for this Lamborghini? It costs £65 billion. Pounds. And you say, oh, don't worry, dear. I've bought a Porsche as well that costs uh, almost 10 times more. So we're in a state of absolute flux and befuddlement. Conservative MPs on, on the record, slightly less than off the record, are, are veering from furious indignation to, to, to complete dismay. Some of the language being used is, I'm sorry, I'm going to use that word again. Some of the language being used is, is actually unprecedented. Uh, my colleague Emily Maitlis this morning speaking to a Tory grandee being told that I, I've never seen the like of it. I cannot see a way to stabilise both markets and politics. Possibly Healy returning from Heathrow on his way to the IMF would set a precedent. That happened in 1976. But remember, Greg Hand says that what's happening today is not unusual to be loved by anyone. I won't do that again, I promise you. So 12 minutes after 10, phone lines are open. What should she do and what will she do? And the second question is fascinating because we now know a bit more about Liz Trust than we did a month ago. We now know that there is a very curious mix here of stubbornness and smugness. I don't use the word smug lightly, but there was talk in, in one of the sketches this morning of her seeming very cheerful when she came out of that disastrous 1922 committee. MPs are telling journalists, one in particular quoted at length, saying if, if this was a candidate, if this was someone trying to become a conservative candidate and they failed so miserably to answer the questions put to them, I wouldn't allow them onto the candidate's list which means that they wouldn't be selected to fight even the biggest Labour majority in the country, a paper candidate with no prospect of winning. Her performance in front of MPs the other night was reportedly so poor that this MP present said, I wouldn't even put her on the candidates list. And yet she is, of course, Prime Minister. And yet she apparently walked out all smiles. The comparison is always with Theresa May, who... Um, looked as if, well, she had the entire weight of the world on her shoulders during all those Brexit deadlocks. Liz Truss, by all accounts, is bouncing around the place as if she's having the time of her life, which is part, I think, of any answer to the question of what is she likely to do. She's, she's not in any way, it would seem, um, conscious of the 
calamity or the catastrophe that's unfolding. And psychologically, I don't understand that. I, I don't under I, look, I know Porsches cost less than Lamborghinis. Please don't pick me up on these pedantic points. Maybe the Lamborghini was like really old and the Porsche was brand spanking new. Or, or you can swap them around if you want, if you don't like the uh if you don't like the analogy. You can have the we bought a Porsche and you take it home and your wife says, How are you gonna pay for it? And you say, Don't worry, I bought a Lamborghini as well. These are not the details you should be picking me up on, quite frankly. Details you should be picking me up on are on my analysis of Liz Truss and my analysis of, of, of the way out of the current crisis. So here are the three options that she has. And the Times newspaper distills them quite neatly today, while Robert Shrimsley, writing in the Financial Times yesterday, quite quite beautifully highlights the, uh, the five M's that essentially uh, are currently holding her hostage. But there are the three ways out. She's going to do a complete U-turn, OK? Apart from... National insurance, none of the tax cuts announced by Kwasi Kwarteng last month have been enacted yet. So she could announce that none of them will go ahead, either never or until inflation has fallen significantly. It would be an astonishing political move, but we are in astonishing political times. It would involve her admitting that her chancellor had made a catastrophic mistake while possibly trying to pretend that her fingerprints weren't all over it as well. And on top of that, she'd have to try and gain the trust of voters, which is currently at an all-time low. If she feels under existential threat, if she thinks she's about to be defenestrated by her own members, that might be the only course of action she could follow. Path two would be a partial U-turn. So she gets rid of some of the flagship measures while remaining others. Most obviously, I think that corporation tax um, reversal on Rishi Sunak's original plan to rise it to 25% looks especially vulnerable. Um, it would not be a complete U-turn, but it would qu it would still make her look like she doesn't know what she's doing. And if she looks like she doesn't know what she's doing, the markets will not be somehow unspooked, if you see what I mean. That, that is the fear. Even if she does what the markets want, if she does it in a slightly clumsy or cack-handed way, the markets will not be suddenly reassured that she suddenly knows what she's doing. If it did calm the markets, then she could still sell cuts in personal tax, stamp duty and national insurance to the population as, as, as wins. And she would have to then ignore the problem that these are all measures which Labour has already supported. So quite what she'd be able to sell at PMQs as clear blue water between her and the Labour Party, only time would tell. And then finally, and weirdly, there is the chance that she will do nothing. The keep calm and carry on school of thought. They propose sweeping tax cuts because they have been, if you like, brainwashed. They've, they've been, their brains have been kidnapped by the Tufton Street vampires and they genuinely believe that, that making richest people richer, removing any restrictions or uh, regulations that protect the population or protect the workforce in order to further enrich the owners is the way towards economic growth. They believe in the myth of trickle-down. And if they truly believe in that with a, with a cultish devotion, then they may well um, calculate that Conservative MPs are going to bottle the prospect of getting rid of them and putting the third leader in 12 months into, into Downing Street. But I don't know. I mean, that, there it is. Those are your three choices as far as I can see them. You have a, a complete U-turn, a partial U-turn, or absolutely no change of course at all. What do you think she will do? And remember, there's psychology involved in that as much as there is politics. Um, and what do you think she should do? They are two slightly different questions. And of course, that's three ways out of the current crisis. You might be able to spot another one. I can't currently imagine what it would be. I think we've got all the bases covered with complete U-turn, partial U-turn, no U-turn at all. But I'm going to use that word again. These are unprecedented times. So possibly they will prompt unprecedented contributions. The phone lines are open. Okay, hit the numbers now. You will get through. What is Liz Truss going to do and what should Liz Truss do about the current catastrophe, the current self-inflicted catastrophe that they continue to insist is not a catastrophe at all? And if you've got any expertise in this field, well... That makes one of us. If you've got any expertise in this field, but bring it to bear. If you work in the markets, if you're if you're in the, the the business of business or the business of finance, then maybe put a bit of flesh on the bones of this half past four 
uh, cliff edge later today or, or, or what that tension there between doing something that should calm the markets, but given what's been happening for the last month, it probably won't calm the markets. I'd be interested to benefit from the fruits of your learning and experience. But in the first instance, this is this is the number you need. 0345 6060 973. It's 1018. It is 10.22. Andrew and Hernhill suggests that Liz Truss should retire from politics altogether and invest in a whelk stall. I'm not entirely sure that that counts at this point, Andrew, as a viable fourth option to the path out of the problems that currently engulf her. And similarly, I mean, she may well uh, uh, call a general election in a fit of pique, as this texter suggests. Uh, if, if I'm going down, then you're all going down with me. But it, it, it isn't a path out of the current problems, is it? It's, a, it's an amplification or a... Um, I don't know, a kind of diversion. Getting rid of the Chancellor, again, I, I understand why you've suggested that, but it, the policy decision, getting rid of a Chancellor is not a policy decision. What are the policy decisions that get her out of the woods or at least get her onto the next uh, paving stone, the next crazy paving stone? Complete U-turn, partial U-turn, keep calm and carry on. Jonty's in St John's Wood. What do you reckon, Jonty? Hi, James. Can you hear me all right? Loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, none of us know, but this is my guess. I don't, think spoil, don't spoil the premise of the entire show, mate. Of course none of us know. That's the point oh, of a phone-in programme. It only yeah. lasts five minutes if there was a definitive answer to any of these questions. By the way, before you push the button on me, make sure you ask me what present I have for you. I have a present for you. I will um, do. Thank you. OK, so some of us have messiah complexes. Yes. She doesn't. She has a Maggie complex. She okay. literally is living through a delusion that she's Maggie, um, as it were, reincarnated, although I know that's impossible because they lived at the same time. Um, but she's living through her Maggie moment. So for her, she's in 1980-81 um, in her Maggie uh, campaign. I don't know if you remember. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you're, yeah. You probably I was, not, I was nine. Three. I wasn't paying a great deal of attention. I was more interested <laughs> in Nottingham Forest's European Cup experts. Well, you would, you would have heard that there were some like 360-odd economists that wrote to the FT. Yes. Uh, uh, complaining, yeah. So Trump, Saying that Thatcher whole... was wrong. Huh? They were saying that Thatcher was wrong, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Except for Patrick Mumford. So, yes. so basically, um, trust, the more people... Gosh, rally right. against trust, the more she thinks she's in her Maggie moment. The, that's why she's so happy. She's living through her Maggie dream. This is confirmation <laughs> she's Maggie. You've gone full psychological rather than political, oddly, despite citing the ghost of Margaret Thatcher, but she, she sees all of this as valid. I mean, that would be absolutely terrifying, she, because the circumstances, yeah. are so, the circumstances are so different. And also because, I don't know if you heard last week, and we, we learned that Rick Perlstein, who is the, the, the kind of historian who she has cited in support of your theory, he, yeah. he, you know, his yeah. work describing Reaganomics and Thatcherism, she cited yeah. as inspirational to her, and he came out and said his mind had been blown by the scale of her misreading of his work. Yeah. So it's delusional well, on every imaginable level, but possibly true. James, yes. the proof that it's got to be psychological, not political, is if you look, if you trace her steps every day since the Queen died, because before the Queen died, yes. we hadn't seen her yet, every day she's do, done things that are so politically inept, it's got to be psychological. Oh, well, you could, but she may have a way, she may still reach a point where, where the spell breaks because at the moment, I'm putting you down, and I'm actually going to keep a tally of these. At the moment, you're going for keep calm and carry on. No, 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 no. Okay, My so what's she going to do then? What's she going to yeah. do? Okay, this is how she's going to do it. She's how she's going to square it in her brain. She will do enough in her own mind to think she's going to quell the market. So she's going to do a part U-turn. Okay. I don't know what you call that. Partial U-turn. But not enough so that she would lose her, her self-validating Maggie Grandeur. All right, detail. She what does that mean then? So that means a, a U-turn on the corporation know. tax, but leave... Yeah, leave... corporation, but she won't pull it fully up. So She'll put oh, it... Okay. I don't know what the numbers are, but she'll put it halfway. Well, it's 19 at the moment. It's due to be 25. So she could do so a, go for a, a fudge. Okay. No, I like... So it goes under partial U-turn, but a slightly different partial U-turn from the complete abandonment of the policy. Uh, John T, yes. what present have you got for me? Yes. In your, it's not your email, but in the LBC, you know, whatever it is that you, yeah. you know, message, I've done a full research exposing the Jacob Rees-Mogg lie that the markets turned because of the Bank of England's announcement. His, of, his, his, his claim that the reaction to the mini budget had nothing to do with the mini budget. Complete lie. I, yes, I, I've given you an hour by hour 
actually it's not hour by hour it's not that tedious but i've given you an absolute chronology you could look at it because on the i will the i'm not going to lie to you I, I mean i'm very grateful and everything I, 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 but i'm not i'm not i was i was, I was hoping for chocolate or something like that <laughs> got sent a lovely yeah, well, tea i got sent a lovely t-shirt the other day by by podcast yeah. merch and, and, and they'd added my name to the bottom of that exploding heads list of the of the anti-growth coalition but i will look at that john t and i and i, and I, and I know that it will be incredibly detailed because your contributions to the program always are um i, I was in Budley last night at the Budley festival uh, the beautiful market town on the sides of the river seven very near where i grew up in kidderminster and i got asked loads of questions i mean such brilliant questions and one of them has haunted me slightly uh, one of the questions was who has been the best prime minister of the last four years and i'm live on stage in front of an audience um, I just mentioned that because I think I'd, I'd like everyone to have a think about that. Who has been the best prime minister of the last twelve years? Sorry, of the last four prime ministers, who's been the best of the last twelve years? Katie is in Alsey in Bedfordshire. Katie, what would you like to say? Hello. Um, Hello. Sorry, you have to bear with me because I've never called in before. So well, you've used a um, phone sorry, though. You've, 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 you've used a phone before. It's, it's it's no different. It's just true. the same. This is true. Carry Absolutely. On. Um, so I don't think that she'll do a full U-turn because I don't think that she wants to. She wants to take the keep calm and carry on approach, in right. my opinion. Yes, I think um, you're right. I don't think that she, I don't think she can. I think that's the, the main thing. I don't think she can. So I do think there will be a, a partial U-turn. Um, I could be wrong, obviously. I well, don't we know. Could all, we could all be wrong. <laughs> uh, Absolutely, but I think she will have to. I think that's how it all it will what it will boil down to. I think she will have to. Um, I think that personally, I think that we should have a general election um, because that's what the vast majority of the public want. We know that, um, and it's it's infuriating actually because I feel we live in a democracy. We don't live in a dictatorship. Mm. Um, but at the moment, it's almost as if she's treating us as, as, as if we, we do live in a dictatorship, and we don't. This There's is a very strange... In a democratic country. No, I, 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 no, it's all right. I was interrupting you. I should apologise. There's a very strange abandonment of that manifesto, that, that mandate. That's what I struggle... I, that's what, I tell you what, at the moment, we're too busy worrying about the immediate emergency. When the alarm bells are ringing, you don't start wondering whether the furniture could be nicely arranged or, you know, rearranging the deck chairs when the Titanic starts sinking. But when historians of the future come to look at this, when political historians come to look at this, I think one of the big... One of the biggest chapters will be the complete abandonment of manifesto pledges in 2019 that not mm. only delivered an 80-seat majority, but are also very much at odds with an awful lot of what she is doing now. So that supports your your theory. Normally, I'd bulk slightly at a word as big as di dictatorship, but what, mm. how else do you describe it? She has not been put into power by any meaningful democratic mandate. Absolutely. She has inherited yeah. a mandate from the last general election, which I think is fine if she continued to legislate according to that manifesto. I think that's defensible. I think that is democratic. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the, the faces might have changed, but the policies and the promises haven't. But she's thrown exactly. that under a bus. It's quite bizarre. Absolutely. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, none of us voted for this. Well, except for the, the Tory members. And it's funny, I've, I've always been Tory, really. Um, but so You sound I very young, if you, don't, if you don't mind. How, uh, can I ask how old yeah. you are? So I'm 24. You, twig, you um, can't say I've always been a Tory. Well, You've only been allowed to vote for six years. I, mean. I do know what you mean. Yes. I mean, for, for the, the short life that I have had, <laughs> I've always been, yes. been Tory. <laughs> um, but, but yes, no, I, I wouldn't. I would never vote for them for them now. Um, and I think that they've, they've made a huge mistake. They've had, made a huge mistake. Um, and I think they've just been in power for too long now. I think we really need a change. We need a, a change of direction. We need something different. Um, because I just don't feel that this sport is clearly not working. <laughs> well, I, I don't think, well, I, possibly somebody like David Frost or, or, or some IEA bod might dispute your conclusion that it's not working. But I, I mean, probably. I, I don't know but quite what. In my what, opinion, I don't think it is. No. <laughs> and I don't know what you'd have had to have for breakfast in order to arrive at any other conclusion, to be honest, Katie. In the, in the, everything's exactly. going brilliantly. Everything's going brilliantly. Um, thank you. Uh, you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Remember, don't send me texts complaining that you can't get through. When I bid farewell to Katie, it frees up a phone line for you. God, that almost rhymes. It, sound like, it sounds pre prepared. 03456060973. So it's two for the partial U turn at the moment. None 
none for the complete U-turn and none for the keep calm and carry on. Um, and, and remember, we need a side order of what should she do as well as what, what will she do. And I thought Jonty's analysis before Katie's brilliant contribution about the psychological Maggie complex was actually really helpful because, you know, if you're trying to make sense of things you don't understand, the explanations don't have to be logical if the thing that you're trying to understand doesn't display any signs of logic itself. It's 10.31. Lottie Morley is here now with your headlines. It is 10.35. It is a, a, a vexed question. What will Liz Trust do next? And, of course, what should Liz Trust do next? I have to tell you that if you're not fully across this um, Rick Perlstein guy, then you should be, because it's it's actually chilling. I hadn't appreciated the full detail of it myself, but John T's, uh Maggie Thatcher complex theory prompted me to go back to sources. And, and it, it, what happened was that Liz Truss let it be known that her favourite historian was a guy called Rick Perlstein. Um, he's sort of the, the, the chronicler of the rise of the new right under Nixon and, and Reagan and then, of course, in, in Britain under Thatcher. She told journalists that she read, quotes anything that he wrote. Um, his books were prominently displayed on her shelves whenever interviewers turned up. And she, or sources close to her, even briefed a journalist at, at The Spectator magazine that um, with, with quotes uh, from his account of the rise of Ronald Reagan. So he was asked what he thought about this. And he replied uh, to the British journalist uh, Nick Cohen, he replied, Liz can't read. And then went into a, a detailed account of why if she had actually read his books with the attentiveness that she claimed, she would never have risked pensions and mortgages with a naive belief that tax cuts would stimulate economic growth and raise t- revenue for the Treasury. I, I, I mean, it is actually an amazing article that Nick Cohen wrote, again, for The Spectator. Um, and I hadn't appreciated the detail that Rick Perlstein had provided on precisely why Liz Truss was so wrong to claim that she was following a course effectively described and endorsed by Rick Perlstein. Now, I I, I am um, conscious this morning of very angry people who don't understand anything but think they've somehow been winning for the last six years, and not just the ones who are still commissioned to write comment pieces for the Daily Telegraph. How do you square that? How do you square the, 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 the fact that the bloke she thought she was following thinks she's a complete lemon? That's actually terrifying. She's in charge of the country. Satnam Sangira in The Times suggests that we're now in the sort of um, championship football team facing relegation school of leadership selection. The Times reports this dream ticket in quotes of Rishi Sunak and Penny Mordaunt waiting in the wings for the Tories to install them. So she's got problems everywhere. And yet the air she gives, the impression she gives is that she's loving it. And and the only analysis I think we're going to hear that can make sense of all of those elements is probably Jonty's, that um, she 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 actually thinks she's everybody else is wrong and she is right, which is a sort of Thatcherite homage. And then uh, of course our last caller, Katie, saying the only real way out of this is a general election. So so that would be for. Paths, fourth pass, although the general election is not a policy decision. Abdul is in Milton Keynes. Abdul, what do you reckon? Um, yeah, hi, James. Oh. Um, a couple of things. Like, I, I mean, uh, the first thing is obviously what uh, what she should do, and pretty much she should she should go. Um, but, That's not but a policy I, position. That's a personnel decision. Yeah, but to be honest, I don't think she's going to go anywhere at all. I think she's just going to sit it out and stay there. And the, the reason is, it's like, I know there's a lot of this comparison of like, you know, she wants to, um, you know, put herself up as the new Maggie Thatcher and things like that. Mm. But one of the things is, I, I mean, I was, I was quite young when, when Maggie was in power, but so at I, the man. same time, uh, you know, at the same time, it was like, you know, you watch speeches of Maggie Thatcher and she would say something and, you know, whether it was right or wrong, people would applaud. They would, they would, you know, uh, be like shouting things and things like that. And the difference between her and, and Liz Truss is like, Liz Truss is like one of these bad comedians. She'll say something and she'll think like, oh, I've come to the punchline. This is like amazing policy I've just done. And then she'll put her emphasis on it and the room will just be quiet. But she just doesn't understand that actually, uh, you know, they're they're quiet because, um, you know, something that she said is just so um, badly thought out and yeah. so, you know, so terribly designed. She actually thinks, right, okay, 
I need to smack these lot on the head with my hammer of my of my punchline of my you know of my idea until they start like laughing and applauding and things like that. And she's for me, she's one of these people who kind of like you know everybody knows something like this, somebody like this in life where you know they will they'll be sitting in sitting in in a room and you know my my dad my dad's from Libya right and basically he um because there's a bit of a language barrier yeah. um he will go and he'll sit in a room like like my mom's family from Pakistan right and he'll right. sit there and he'll be like like oh you know how about that cashmere thing right and then oh, no. <laughs> but you know by 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 mom's family be sitting there like uh, okay we don't really want to discuss it and then my dad will just continue he'll keep talking about it right and, and this trust is like that it's kind of like she'll be like uh, talking about something and people be like oh you know this is not right what you're talking about but she'll just keep banging on and banging on about it and keep talking about it because she cannot read the room at all. She's just I, I, well, incapable unless, of reading the room. Unless she's calling their bluff. I mean, that's part of your analysis as well, isn't it? That, that, that I mean, because the biggest threat to her is defenestration and she's yeah. going to, she's perhaps calculating they wouldn't dare. We're four, you know, what would it be? It'd be I mean, yeah. four, four leaders in four years. And the other, Ray, the other thing, Johnson, the other thing that Johnson, I think is a bit, is a bit, weird it's like you know uh, a lot of people and i think you're talking I, what did he call it footballification or, or whatever yes. it is where you can't what do you mean whatever it own. is it's one of my most I'm cherished sorry, and, and <laughs> proud series <laughs> but basically like you know that they can't criticize their own leader or whatever mm. but when i look at it i kind of think um liz trust doesn't seem to me to be conservative she kind of seems to be like a libertarian it's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to tell you how to save money. I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to just let you not, you know, the rich people not pay any tax or whatever. And you go and do whatever and the country will be fine. It, that's like a libertarian point of view. It's not really like a, yeah. you know, a, a, a kind of, you know, conservative point of view from a, you know. So you think no you change at, at all? You're going for keep calm? Well, I mean, maybe keep calm well, is a I bit of a miss. I don't want it like that. No, I know you <laughs> so don't, but it, this is what she that. will do. <laughs> what she will do yeah, is, is she will press on. There. And she's whether she's calling there. the bluff of her colleagues or whether she is waiting for the for them all to realise that she's the only one that's right and they're all wrong, whatever the rationale behind it will be, she's not gonna she's not gonna press she's not gonna change course at all. And then and then right at the end, uh, you know, when when you know they get absolutely pounded in the election, it's mm. gonna be oh, uh, you know, because of Putin, this is why this happened and stuff like that. Which it's, she she's doesn't never she, gonna she, understand. No, and she doesn't have the political dishonesty to do that. Oddly, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank, no, thank, thank you, Abdul. I, she doesn't have the political dishonesty to do that in a way that Boris Johnson could make ludicrous claims about vaccine rollouts or economic growth built upon you know a tiny little spangle of truth. But from a spangle of truth, he would construct an entire sweet shop of embellishment and exaggeration. Fascinating email from a pal of mine in in, in the city. I didn't know he he, he was listening. Um, He says, you're bang on regarding the pound. In all my years of trading, not many times can I remember the whole market looking to buy the pound and gilts on the prospect of the Chancellor getting binned. Both were up yesterday on rumours that trust will row back. My view uh, is that she'll sack Kwarteng and delay the tax cuts, stick them in the weeds for a few months till everyone's forgotten. Uh, The market is not stupid. They know it's a U-turn. And he adds, I like this, he adds, I like the Lamborghini analogy, though instead of the porch purchase, I'd go with quitting my job, um, making a massive purchase, reducing my income. It's total madness. It's good to hear someone actually explaining why what she has done is so crazy. I take that as an enormous compliment. So you go out, you buy a Lamborghini, you come home and your wife says, or your husband says, well, how on earth are we going to pay for that Lamborghini? And you say, don't worry, darling, I've also quit my job. I love it when analogies grow. I love it when they they, they develop lives of their own. So we're, we're abandoning the Porsche and we're going instead for, yeah, I've quit my job as well. How are we going to pay for that Lamborghini? Oh, don't worry about that. I've also quit my job. We, 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 we've now drastically reduced our income as well. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. So two for a partial U-turn, one for a keep calm and carry on. I, I'm going to have to cast my own vote at some point, but I shall canvass a few more of yours. Two phone lines free into the studio at the moment. 03456060973 is the number that you need. A few of you wondering whether you can do a U-turn in midair, which is, of course, where the Chancellor of the Exchequer is at the moment, and a few people wondering whether there'll be any movement while we're on air. And the short answer to that is I don't know. I, I don't think it's impossible, but I suspect just in terms of time and clocks, it is unlikely. The time now is 10.45.
It is 10.48. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Um, Ollie points out the Lamborghini analogy can continue to evolve, James, for as long as Theo Usherwood is still your wife. If you know, you know. And I would hope that most people listening know. Lewis is in Lincoln. Lewis, what do you reckon? Morning, James. Great Hello. show. Great to be on. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have to rein myself in a bit. I've been, I've been in full ramp mode for a few weeks now, so I'll try and just address the question at hand and have yes. some vote in the poll. So I think we'll get a partial U-turn. Uh, I think exactly what you said earlier, uh, they'll pick corporation tax, uh, probably try and sell as a postponement rather than a, a total U-turn, so that'll save a little bit of face. I think we'll get some reshuffling in the cabinet, not a full reshuffle. Uh, I think as well as Toast and a couple of others. Uh, they'll limp on for a bit. No, I'll, pa- I'll pause you there. That I, I mean, it's so bizarre. Even with Johnson, you you could make sense of his dishonesty if you see what I mean. You could you could you could say, well, I, he might do this because he is so fundamentally dishonest that he wouldn't balk at chucking anybody under the bus. With Truss, it's very hard to to. I haven't got a handle yet on 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 her pathology, but I would have thought. She can't afford to make an enemy yet, or ever, probably, but certainly not now, of people uh, like so. She might yeah. throw Kwarteng under a bus for reasons which are linked to the mini-budget, but not Braverman for reasons that aren't linked to the mini-budget. I just don't think she's going to be making decisions anymore. I think it's going to be the backbench MPs, whoever they move into the cabinet, and she's already been sidelined uh, well on immigration policy. Yeah, no, she has, and, and the Indian trade deal's fallen apart overnight. I don't know if you've seen that report. And, and it makes and it makes it look weak. So what they're concerned about at the moment is it's making it look weak. So they'll remove the bits that make it look weak, try and shore her up. She can she can limp on for a bit. Mm. Um, I don't think the polls will budge. Probably going to have to be another U turn at some point on public spending. Um, and then probably get a new Tory leader next year. Well, do you know, point. I'm enjoying this a lot because with every call, my own position shifts slightly, as as you'd hope when you're having a sort of open and open-minded conversation. Everyone who rings in in support of the parcel U-turn makes me think that a complete U-turn would be more likely or better. And I know we're being logical, which is always dangerous in these. But but if she's gonna if she's gonna lose any face at all, why doesn't she go all in on it? So if I'm Liz Truss, yeah. the only card I've got left is that it would be catastrophic for the Tory party to have a new leader now. Um, if she does a full U-turn, she, she's done. She's absolutely done. You, why, why? Why? Why is she done? I mean, if, if that's what the backbenchers want. A full U-turn is going to actually be economically the best thing to do. It's the, it's the one thing that, that is going to, or the best chance she's got of truly... Uh, calming the markets would be a full U-turn and and uh, some sort of admission that that she got it wrong. The backbenchers would be relieved because you know economic meltdown is the biggest threat to their re-election, and she is perhaps craven enough. And we know she's you know done full U-turns on everything from abolishing the monarchy right through to Brexit, so she can accommodate that in her own what passes for her conscience. So why would that be so injurious? Because the only thing more damaging than a full U-turn is another leadership election now. They look so shambolic. She's but done... A full a U-turn plan. reduces... Not just, not a full Prime Minister, she does a full U-turn. A full U-turn reduces the chance of another leadership election. The pressing ahead increases it. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, we're both theorising. I, 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 looking at the noises coming out of the back bench, a full U-turn would, would be like, well, thank God for that, rather than, oh, my God, I can't believe she's done it. They want a full U-turn. So how could doing what they want render her even more vulnerable than she is already? Ha-ha! It, it's, it's difficult to work out because she was such an unknown entity before. We're only really learning to know her, so... Starting to see a little bit of what I mean. I, I thought at first she's first. I thought no, no, she's stupid. She's just yes. stupid. Yes. And then I thought no, she's mad. She's completely mad. And then I thought no, 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 she's really cunning. This is just the back door to austerity 2.0. And then I came right back to the start and thought no, no, she she is actually quite stupid in judgment terms. Her judgment is really bad. I, I, yeah, I, I, stupid mad. isn't quite the right word, is it? I, I know Not, exactly what you mean. It's almost. It's, it's, I mean, I mean, decision making. Judgment, self awareness, emotional intelligence, it's just not there. All the things you need to be a prime minister uh, are just not there. But what then why she is, is she so pleased with herself then? What she is, and I do admire this about her, she's incredibly determined and dogged and appears to have an amazingly thick skin. 
And I think that's what will enable her to, to limp on. Yes, uh, I, well, except until she's not allowed to by, by the people that follow her. Thank you, Lewis. It's 10.53. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. They're, they're, I'm getting reports and rumours and suggestions, which I'm frightened of mentioning on air, even with my uh, uh, modest following. I, I don't want to be responsible for any buying or selling. But um, So bear with. I won't share anything with you until I've double-sourced it or it's, it's, it's completely confirmed. Um Patrick is in Bath. Patrick, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Hello. Um, I don't. I don't. I think she's going to double down. Um, keep calm and carry on, or not keep calm, but carry on. Well, there's yes, yes. I think that's what she's going to initially do. I think that's what she's going to initially do. If this is all about Liz Truss, what the rest of the Conservative Party chooses to do about that, they're probably on manoeuvres already. Um, but well, so what time scale the, are we talking about here, do you think? Um, I was talking with some friends and I said six months, but I might have to revise it. it well, we've got, I mean, the, October 31st is crucial. Half past four today is crucial as well, of course, actually. October 31st will need to be brought forward and they're currently being dragged to do that. They were initially not going to... Well, that's partial U-turn territory then. There's no point bringing forward October the 31st unless they're going to do something different, is there? They're being, they're being dragged to do that. It's going to need to come forward because otherwise we have this vacuum between now and October the 31st and even more instability is going to come in. The Bank of England is stopping at half past four this afternoon, mm. at which point free market principles up in the city of London, they'll do their thing. They will do what they do. That will have its impact. And, and 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 this is why I am leaning towards either partial or full U-turn, unlike you, because they are that what has happened overnight. What what is um, looking like a, a levelling is very simply based on the belief that there is going to be a change of course, and if there isn't a change of course, then we go off another cliff. I, I presume. Well, that's it. The, the markets have now priced that in. Whether there's whispers to the markets behind the scenes that this is what we are going to do. And they are this time trying to condition the market to expect oh, that, yeah. as opposed to what they did last time. I don't know. But my feeling is that Liz Truss will double down on her current position. OK, so I'll put you... I mean, it's 3-2 it's then for, from the from the partial U-turn to the to the keep calm and carry on. No one yet in support of the complete U-turn except me, very 52-48% thinking that if you're going to lose face, you might as well get rid of all of it but then that overlooks perhaps the fact that she actually believes in this crud thank you patrick david's in bermondsey david what would you like to say uh good morning i've, I've changed my opinion a couple of times having heard some really good points it'll never so, catch on but it'll never catch <laughs> on david <laughs> my current idea is she's going to stay the course with the direction of tax cutting but mm. she's going to pull some rabbits out of the hat that's why quarteng's coming back they need to work on it now they're going to sell something off they're going to do something major that will offset. Yeah, well, what corner has she got to go in? She, this is what she said she's going to do. What's she going to say? I mean, you need a bit more than this. What's what? What could she? What do you mean, sell something? I don't know. Go, come, I no, well, you have to know. You can't. You can't just say. I mean, there has to be some sort of detail to your theory. I'm trying to understand someone who's illogical. I'm really <laughs> She's going to sell something. She's going to sell London Bridge to an American. She's going to sell Nelson's column. To a... <laughs> but we could see massive, massive change to the NHS, to a US provider. Who knows? But I don't think Kwarteng will go. They're, they're tied together now. Mm, mm. They are the only people who agree with each other, left in the whole Tory party. <laughs> so he's not getting sacked. But what they're going to do, I don't... I don't know what her game plan is because she's got no good way to go. So that's why I think she'll double down from the Thatcher point of you've got to stay the course. I'm right. Everyone else is wrong. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, 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 that's just run through this hour, hasn't it? That thought. It's the only thing that fits I mean, in the absence of, of a proper explanation. Nature abhors a vacuum, doesn't it? And that, that fitting into it almost like a sort of I do believe in, in, in fairies. I do believe in fairies' insistence, which has been part of British politics since 2016. You, you, I, it's a bit like, I, you know me and my analogies. It's, it, have you ever met anyone who is absolutely certain that they're going to win the lottery? 
or they or they buy a sc- scratch card that they're absolutely certain is going to is going to is going to deliver. This isn't a brilliant analogy, because but but sometimes when people do win the lottery, they say very confidently and very uh, boldly. They say, um, "I knew, I always knew that I was going to win the lottery. I was just certain of it." And of course, what that overlooks is the fact that there is a couple of million people out there who are absolutely certain that they're going to win the lottery one day, and they never will. But you somehow, it's it's a bit correlation and causation, isn't it? You think that because you were absolutely certain that you were going to win the lottery one day, and then when entirely due to chance and dumb luck, you actually do win the lottery, you can't help thinking in your head that there was actually a relationship between you winning the lottery and you believing that you were going to win the lottery. She is absolutely certain that she's right, I think. I think this is the only thing that makes sense. She is absolutely certain that she's right. She's clearly not a deep thinker, and and that's not rude. The fact that the historian she cites as a major influence and source has has literally gone on the record to say she doesn't understand anything that I've written. So she's clearly not a deep thinker, but she's like a sort of magpie. She looks around for something that she can then cling to as, as a thing of value even if she hasn't understood what it is at all. She, she somehow is, has a capacity for belief that is beyond, beyond the reach of all logic and evidence, which isn't exactly reassuring, is it? It is three minutes after 11. Now, I have to tell you something quite important. If you are lucky enough to get a guilt trader ringing into your programme at a moment like this, you have to be aware that they might have to hang up at any moment because the market is on a, on a knife edge at the minute. And... Uh, of course, if the political picture does change, if, for example, the Prime Minister does make some sort of announcement now that Kwasi Kwarteng, I think, has landed, then the anyone who makes a living uh, through the markets is going to have to be uh, on, on, on tiptoe. So I will introduce Andrew in Chelsea, who we spoke to um, uh, about a fortnight ago, just under a fortnight ago, and, and he gave us some very useful information on this by from the perspective of being a guilt trader, but don't blame me or him if he has to hang up halfway through this call and return to his terminal. Andrew, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi, James. How are you? Very well, mate. What's going Actually, on? As, uh, as you was introducing me, it's just come out on the BBC that Liz Truss is to hold a press conference later today. There you go. Um, so uh, it's kind of, I think it's pretty much official now that there will be some kind of change to our budget later. Um, the, this, since yesterday that the news started spreading that um, there was going to be some kind of U-turn, even though, astonishingly, it was being denied right up until this morning. Um, now, what does that do think, in terms of in terms of the pound and in terms of markets? So, so the, the, because the pound has steadied, as I understand it, because the, of the expectation of a U-turn, but the politicians are still insisting that there won't be one. So, what? what how do you decide who to trust, as it were, in a situation well, like that? Well, that's that. That was going to be a point I was going to make later. Um, Sorry. Basically, with uh, well, what's happened since yesterday is that there's been talk of a U-turn, so gilt prices have rallied. Um, and it sent the pound up quite a bit. Um, now, what, what, they, what they're pricing at the moment is a full U-turn on, on the corporate tax, uh, um, keeping it at 19%. So they're, they're, they're pricing in a full um, reversal of that. Right. So it goes to 25% next year. If that doesn't materialise, um, if they don't announce that, I can tell you I'm pretty more than confident that gilt prices and the pounds will resume a slide, and I think it would be quite a bad slide. Um, if it's a partial U-turn, so if they, which has been suggested by some of your guests, yeah. um, again, I think the gilt and the pound prices will resume sliding. Um, so right now, the only thing they can do to satisfy markets would be a full U-turn. Um, on on the corporation one, tax, she, she could leave... National insurance, um, personal tax, and stamp duty in place, but on the corporation tax, a full U-turn is the only thing that would. I think at the moment that would be the only thing that would satisfy satisfy the market, mm. um, but I don't think it would lead to any further rally. Pretty much, I, I think pretty much we're there now for the pound, one thirteen, really? one fourteen. I don't think um, because the the confidence has been lost. You know, the government has no, there's no confidence in the, uh, in the government whatsoever now. For me to buy the pound and the guilt further, it would have to be the Chancellor resigning or, or being fired. 
and someone like Rishi Sunak coming in to steady the ship. So this that is would in, in, reason, that would be the only way that I would do it. In layman's terms, then the, 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 that's gone forever. The idea, the illusion, the, moment, yeah. the impression that they have the first idea what they're playing at has left the building, and therefore Complete you would you would need to right. change the team sheet to have a prayer to have a hope in hell of restoring confidence absolutely yeah it, it's completely gone the confidence in this government um and their comp- and their economic competence which in a month a mate in a month years, in a month really built it that up you know well, you could argue that I, I mean, well i suppose from your point of view you could argue that i, I mean if you if you prioritize other things you, you you'd struggle to do so where was the pound before we left the european union just remind us Oh, yeah, I'm talking, um, I'm talking in terms of economic uh, policy. I'm not talking political yeah. policy. No, exactly. Policy. Well, exactly. And that's what's interesting about this, because they're, they're both uh, inseparable and, and yet need to be separated, don't they? Because getting rid of the yeah. Chancellor would essentially be more of an economic policy now under your analysis, which I find very compelling. It would be an economic decision rather than a political one. But could the political impact it would have prevent her from doing it? I, I mean, also, how can she get rid of him while staying in the job herself when they, when they were, you know, they were Batman and Robin on this, weren't they? Well, exactly. I mean, if, you know, if I was him, I'd probably resign because, you know, I mean, he's good. I just don't see how he could get any respect now from the markets, you know. That's it's so quick. It, that's the most amazing thing about it is the speed, isn't it, with which all the yeah. all the credibility, all the confidence has disappeared. It's I mean, he didn't just... have much personally, but as you say, that the, the, the party had accrued some and, and it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone completely. I mean, you know, anyone who elected Truss in the first place, like from the Conservative members, I mean, they knew what she was planning, but none of them ever... No one understood it. I think the people that hosted the hustings have an appalling responsibility here because it should not have just been left like a debate between Andrea Leadsom and... uh, and, and, and Pascal Lamy about the WTO, which is when I w- w- was derelict in my duty as a journalist, you should have been able to say, hang on a minute, one of you's making sense and one of you isn't. But we always treat everybody as equal and opposite forces on this one. And yet these chickens have come home to roost at a rate of knots. And to see people that voted for Trust come mm. on TV now and actually criticise her is just, I mean, that's just defies belief. Almost, because she told them what she was going to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Which means they didn't exactly. understand it yeah, either. It does indeed. But it's not just the government, to be honest. I mean, the Bank of England also has really let down the UK in a way because, um, the, I mean, they were so slow to raise interest rates um, in the first place. And, you know, ba- Bailey's communication, the way they communicate with the markets is appalling. You know, compared to other central banks. Well, there was that overnight, wasn't there? There was the overnight wobble where they suggested that they were going to continue beyond today with the with the easing, and then by I mean ten o'clock the next morning they were saying that they weren't. I don't know how you. I mean, that must be their fault. Someone's briefed somewhere, and something's changed its mind, or that's just messy. So, what would you have done if you were governor of the Bank of England? How would you have handled this? Well, I mean, I mean, I would have changed the communication policy from from ages ago because the Bank of England stopped giving guidance on interest rates a while ago. Um, so they banned anyone from kind of mm. giving um, any kind of you know push to the markets either way because they they messed it up so spectacularly. Um, they kind of stopped all communication. Now, stopping all communication leads to a lot of volatility in financial markets because financial markets have to make their own minds up. Um, uh, without kind of knowing, you know, what the thoughts are of, of individual members of the Bank of England. So, you know, I think the whole communication strategy of the bank needs to be uh, upended anyway. Um, but that's obviously a separate um separate topic of conversation. Yeah, well, and no doubt we'll have it when the time comes, but you, you broke the news there, Andrew. I don't know if you've done any journalism before, but you beat me to it, that the, the <laughs> Prime Minister is now, sources report, and it's, it's, it's been reported right across the board that the Prime Minister is due to hold some sort of press conference later today, possibly on my watch. So that, congratulations on that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, you can cross that one off the bucket list. 11, 11 minutes after 11 is the time. Andrew, remember, is a guilt trader, so um, speaks of what he knows. Another indication, really, of the quality of contributors that we get on the programme these days, something which I never, ever, ever cease to be grateful for or or mindful of. But right across the board now from um, The Guardian's political editor to to Sam Coates at Sky News and um, Andrew mentioned the BBC, sources confirm that there is going to be a... um, 
uh, a significant U-turn on one of the Prime Minister's flagship policies. Uh, and that would obviously be the rising corporation tax, which Andrew's analysis there rather helpfully illuminated the fact that it'd have to be the whole hog. There's no point doing a little bit of it. But then you've got the confidence question and you've got the issue of this might sort of calm the horses in one context, but in the context of do these people have the first idea what they're doing, a major U-turn on the two main planks of that mini budget within a month of it being announced is not going to restore or increase confidence, even though it is the right thing to do. This is when politics is at its most granular, I think. Uh, so they, they are going to do the thing, it would seem, that needs to be done, but it's actually going to do even more damage, I would argue, to their confidence and credibility. I have found somebody who is sticking up for Liz Truss. I, I, I suggested that these people were very hard to find. I, I'm just checking on when... I, th I, I believe that Chris Akabushi has... Um, has gone on on the record insisting that Liz Truss... I like Chris Akabushi. I, I'm just pointing out that that... Um, speaks perhaps of how difficult it is to find people prepared to insist that Liz Truss would be wrong to abandon this policy. Uh, Louise is in Weybridge. Louise, what would you like to say? I think the topic's going to change possibly while you're on air. <laughs> I, we'll have to wait and see. What, what, what do you want to say? Well, I'm a first-time caller, James, so Welcome. be gentle with me. Of course I will. <laughs> um, no, I, I sort of rang up, not expecting to get through, and um, your researcher <laughs> answered, and I just sort of said, you know, I'm a lifelong Tory uh, voter, and... Um, I'm just in despair yes. um, with Liz Truss. Um, she, she's just not the right calibre of person to be running the country. And I didn't think she was the right calibre of person when she was foreign secretary. Um, no. So I'm, I'm still... In so you didn't swallow the Brexit Kool-Aid then? You didn't find that these trade deals with Outer Mongolia and, and places like that were actually evidence of her of her political and, and economic genius? Because well, a lot of members did. A lot of, Tory, a lot of Tory members did. Well, I, I listen to Nick Ferrari every morning because mm. I'm walking my dogs, and um, he interviewed her a few times about the um, the you know the war in Ukraine. Yes, and she just didn't even have the correct language, um, and then you had to get the grown-up Ben Wallace in the room to actually talk sense. Interesting. Um, yes. But she completely and she dropped a couple me. of clangers as well, didn't she? She got oh, something awful. wrong. Like, like, Sergey Lavrov set a trap for. Is it a for war? Is that it a, was it. You know, yeah. The, um, but she totally lost me uh, when she was asked. You know, the French. Friend or fl friend oh, or foe. Yeah. Um, you you cannot make throwaway comments like that. Um, you know, love them or loathe them. Emmanuel Macron is is who he is. Mm. And um, you know, at least. Um, but the people in the room that day publicly, would have loved that. The people in the room that some of the people in the room that day would have loved that. That kind of slightly golf. The audience. Go well, golf clubby xenophobia, I'd call it. Yeah. Yeah. I think. So, um, look, you know, I was no, totally uh, Team Rishi, and I worked in the city for 30 years. You know, he, he knows his onions when it comes to the economy. Mm. Um, you know, you've got to get the grown-ups back in the room. I, I kept thinking um, when they announced the mini-budget, they must know what they're doing. They yeah, must me too. know what they're doing. I've been doing this for um, years. I'm thinking I'm just, actually, I'm just a lad from Kidderminster. I, I must be a bear of too little brain to understand the, the, the things that are going But actually, they haven't got a clue, have they? Actually, they don't. They no. don't know what they're doing. No, they really um, don't. You know, it's sort of like, you know, change something over here, break something over there. Mm. And you would think that they must have, uh, you know, some mega brains, you know, in the room with them when they're making these decisions yeah, uh, to Patrick tell them Minford. what the, um, you know, the unintended consequence. If you do this... You know, what are all the consequences and are there any, any other in, unintended consequences? That's what we always used to think in the city before we made any decision about anything. Cool. Yeah. What, could, what could this throw up? But that's pure and, you know, pragmatism. Are what are the risks? Yes, that's of, pure of pragmatism. It's, it, it's the opposite of ideology. I think you've touched on something that I've been thinking for a while. The, these think tank types never mix with anybody else, so they think they are geniuses. And she has fallen under their spell. So she's fallen under the spell of people who are so convinced of their own genius that they can persuade people like Liz Truss that they actually are geniuses. So she's done what they've said. Everything's fallen apart. And it turns out none of them know anything about anything. I've got a question for you. Go on, then. Ready? Mm. If Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng abandon the corporation tax cut or abandon the abandonment of the corporation tax rise, to be pedantically technical... Do they become members of the anti-growth coalition, Louise? I think they'd be hoisted by their own petard, wouldn't they? <laughs> it's a nice phrase as well. Thank you very much. A sparkling debut. 16 minutes after 11 is the time.
It is 19 minutes after 11. Um, Expecting a statement from the Prime Minister, expecting it at the moment to include a rowback on corporation tax. Um, uh, The plan, of course, was to freeze it. That plan will be reversed, we understand, although not entirely clear yet on the numbers, whether it will um, rise a bit uh, or, 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 or stay at 19. I think... The, the clever money at the moment is suggesting it will go up a bit, but they're not yet clear what level it will rise to, which some of our earlier contributors suggested might be the worst of both possible worlds. So we'll continue to keep a very close eye on that. I think my questions still stand. I've got some good news for you on, on matters fiscal. If, you, if you're thinking everything's terrible at the moment and everything these two touch is the opposite of the Midas touch. Um, city bonuses have increased at more than twice the speed of wages since the 2008 financial crash. This is analysis from the TUC that's found average payouts have doubled in cash terms over that period. So if you're worried about the cost of living crisis or you are a little bit baffled as to why Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng wanted to restrict or remove any caps on bankers' bonuses, you'll be delighted, I'm sure, to learn that city bonuses have increased at more than twice the speed of wages since the 2008 financial crash. Um, back to the phones. Linda is in Loughborough. Linda, what do you think? What should she do? What will she do? What on earth is going on? Right, OK, first of all, I'm not a guilt trader, although that guy was excellent. I'm just an ordinary punter that always votes. And I've been thinking a lot about this recently. And I woke yes. up this morning. He missed a couple of important meetings when he was in Australia in the USA, didn't he? He missed a couple of those. Well, he, he, the eyebrows were raised about him not being at a meeting, yeah. but it was later claimed that he was at a one-on-one meeting with another bigwig. So I don't know. The, 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 I was mean, it? certainly Andrew Bailey said at one point, the governor of the Bank of England, I don't know why he's not here. You'd have to ask him yourself. So it would seem that they're not exactly BFFs at the moment. OK. Um, OK, so what is she going to do? I think, maybe it's radical, I don't know. I think She's called him back. I think she's going to sack him. I think he's gone. And I think she's going to have to put another Chancellor in. She's Who? going to admit a mistake because she does make mistakes and yeah. she learns from them. Mm. And I think she's going to put another Chancellor in and there's going to be a radical change in uh, from what Quartang said would happen. And I think she's probably going to announce it at tea time after the markets have closed. So I've got, no big... uh, Theo Ushwood is joining us in a moment with some news on that front, but um, but okay. I don't I don't think that bit of your analysis is going to be borne out by events. Remember, they always deliberately avoid my program, so it'll definitely be after <laughs> one o'clock, Linda. They never let me have the fun of picking over the bones of these. No, that's. I mean, it will be after. T- it'll be tea time when it's it'll announced. Be a bit earlier, I think, but I'm going to let Theo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do think so. I kind of. Oh, okay. Think so. And okay. and uh, the question of whether the chancellor stays or goes again, you're applying. You're doing what I do every day, and then realise I can't anymore. You're applying the rules of normality, the rules of logic to the situation. And you're thinking if they disown the policy, someone's got to carry the can for it. But when's the last time since Boris Johnson became Prime Minister in 2019, when is the last time a politician carried the can for for their own failure? Well, she's going to him for it, isn't she, like she did before. She said, I pointed the wrong man. When did she do that before? When did she do that? When, 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 she, when she said that um, he, he was the one that made the decisions. Remember when she was in that interview with that yes. um, lady and she said it was him that decided? Yes, did yeah. she didn't say she'd appointed it? the wrong man. You've, you've overreached no, a bit there. she said it was his decision. She did. She said, it was, she said it was his decision and she just said it. And she said, did they, contact, did they t- discuss with the cabinet? No, they didn't. So I don't think it's beyond her to sort no. of just sack him, blame him and get someone else in. And who would you like to see? I tell you what, she could do. Oh, Some... I'd like to see Vishy Sunak, but that's not going to happen. No, of is course it? that's not going to happen. I'm looking at the um, um, at my inbox, which I haven't got full control over today because I'm in an unfamiliar studio. So I, they, I only get to glimpse them as they fly by. I can't click on them to read them further. But someone suggested she could put Gavin Williamson in the Treasury, and he could just tell all the problems to go away and shut up. Yeah, that would work. It would work, like yeah. it did with the no. Russians. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> oh, we have to laugh, don't we? In fact, thank you to everybody, including one from Switzerland that I just glimpsed as it flew by, but I can't read it out as an entirety for noticing how hard we try to to inject these rather grim analyses and uh, and, and 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 reports with with some humour and with some 
some levity. I think it's absolutely important. We'd all go mad, wouldn't we, if we were just having an unleavened diet of doom and gloom. But anyway, I told you there's some great news out there. City bonuses have increased at more than twice the speed of wages since the 2008 financial crash. Oh, and Jacob Rees-Mogg's business partner has been given a peerage and a job in government. So there's plenty to celebrate out there if, if you know where to look. Um, you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC, joined by, I mentioned I was in an unfamiliar studio. This, in all my years of broadcasting, is my uh, my first ever home fixture. I'm broadcasting live from Birmingham this morning, which is something I'd actually quite like to do a little bit more of, but it, it was quite short notice, so I haven't managed to line up any Birmingham-specific content. I can tell you, however, that because someone's just whispered in my ear, Theo Usherwood is not only in the studio back in London, but Someone's been sitting in my chair. I am indeed in your chair, uh, James. I thought I'd just, uh, I'd leave the reporter's chair or the guest's chair. It's just sitting opposite opposite me, <laughs> empty. And I thought, I'd, why not? Just for this one time only, sit in uh, the presenter's chair to bring you news. Yes. Uh, that Liz Truss uh, will be holding a press conference later today. From what I understand from my uh, sources, it's going to be... Uh, early afternoon, uh, with no mention of the Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, despite having flown back from uh, what his deputy Chris Philp described as routine scheduled meetings with the International Monetary Fund in Washington uh, in the, this last week. He just flew back early um, and is now back at uh, Heathrow and then making his way into Westminster. But he will not, from looking at the uh, notice that we've been sent, uh, attend, be attending this uh, press conference. Is uh, that significant? I would read something into it, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and there seems to be, to tell you, just to give you a bit of a background on this, because as the story's emerged, it appears there's been something of a tussle between Number 10 uh, and uh, the Treasury, uh, uh, in particular Mr Kwartang, over this issue of whether to do a U-turn uh, on the corporation tax uh, element uh, of the mini-budget. Remember, of course, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak planned for it to go up next April from 19 pence in the pound to 25 pence uh, in the pound. Rishi Sunak making the argument over the summer that reducing corporation tax to record low levels didn't mm. actually encourage uh, business investment did, 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 in I'm, this I'm, country. I, you're, you're, you're being characteristically fluent. I think we need to be a bit slower because the scale of this, everything they... they, they I mean, everything was built upon the belief that this would deliver growth you know she's yes. maligned everybody in the country as being members of the anti-growth coalition and now they're joining it you're quite right to say that james and slow me down because it's important to make the point that whilst the 45p rate which they you turned on at the beginning of uh, the conservative conference actually only accounted for around uh, two billion pounds this, if there is a full U-turn and actually go ahead and increase, as Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak had planned, corporation tax from 19p to 25 pence uh, in the pound, would equate to saving around £18 billion. This is the chunk of uh, the mini-budget reforms in terms of trying to stimulate economic uh, growth. It would be uh, the biggest U-turn uh, of them all. But as I said, there, do, there does appear to have been a tussle uh, in uh, between number 10 and number 11 over this, because yesterday at around this time, uh, the Prime Minister's spokesman uh, said the position had not changed, opening the door for a U-turn, because he's just saying up until now the position had not changed. Then I was one of the journalists got uh, uh, the a briefing that, uh, or was told, I should say, uh, that number 10 actually was in the minds of, it was in their minds to actually uh, reverse uh, the decision to uh, to decrease to keep uh, f to freeze the corporation tax at 19 pence, and then of course Kwasi Kwarteng gave that statement in Washington or that interview uh, with the BBC Faisal Islam in in Washington, where he said no, nothing had changed. We're, we're sticking with well, that was what 12 plans. hours ago, 12 hours, 14 uh, hours, 14 ago? hours, 14 yeah. hours ago. Or, or and it's so. a complete. The Telegraph are reporting. I'm sure you've seen that it's it's going to be the full Monty. They're going to go right up to 25%, which was what Rishi Sunak had originally scheduled. And so they're essentially elected on the back of promising to undo what Rishi Sunak was planning to do, and now they're doing what Rishi Sunak was planning to do after defeating Rishi Sunak in the leadership election. This is off the scale. This is but, this is the one for the ages. But as, as somebody who, who knows the party well and, uh, and, and works across... Um, uh, works across yeah. the, the Conservative Party put it to me this is going to go down fantastically badly amongst those Conservative members who voted for Liz Truss because they were under the impression that they were going to get 
significant tax cuts. Liz Truss went ahead with mm. one of the significant, well, it's a freezing of the tax, but uh, it was nevertheless due to go up next April. And now she's going back on that. And it does seem, it, uh, it does seem, that, and it seemed yesterday that number 10 had won the battle because the it last... Is. The last thing you would want to do, you would think, if you're trying to have a bout of common sense, is to provoke jitters in the market by doing a push me pull you about whether you're going to do a go ahead with right. increasing the tax or increasing corporation tax or, or not. Um, and, and what was interesting was that number 10 were adamant that it had to go ahead. Even the markets seemed to, looking at uh, what was happening this morning, seemed to have priced in in terms of looking at the future peak of interest rates. Uh, Ed Conway is very good to follow on this if you if you want to. But but they made the point that actually the peak had dropped slightly uh, this morning. The estimated peak had dropped slightly this morning on the back of what they were saying when it came to uh, freezing corporation tax and actually going back on uh, the original promise list trust going back on the original promise so to suddenly then say well actually we're not going to go ahead uh, and increase corporation tax would uh, be w- would be perverse in the, in, yeah. in in the slightest well uh, yeah except that, that, that everything they've done pretty much since they got into the building is perverse theo thank you we may talk again because this story is unfolding 2 p.m then for that statement from the prime minister um and actually just before we head towards the headlines speaking of statements from prime ministers we have, of course, heard lots of people suggesting that Liz Truss has some sort of Margaret Thatcher complex. And uh, it might be a moment to remind us of a statement from that Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, that was truly one for the ages. Can we hear that, please? 